Thank you for joining us for our monthly webinar series from Local Market Monitor, where we take a closer look at this month's National Economic Outlook, which was written by Local Market Monitor's founder, Ingo Windsor. For those of you that don't know Ingo, Ingo he has been analyzing real estate markets for over 30 years and is a graduate of MIT and Boston University. He is not your typical economist and has a knack for taking complex data, extracting what is important, and providing unique insights and tangible guidance on real estate markets. So with that, I bring you Ingo and his insights on the economy. Thanks very much, Carolyn. Every month we look at the latest economic data to see what they can tell us about the current state of real estate markets and where they might be headed. Our underlying premise is that you make better investment decisions when you have a better idea of the economic forces that affect supply and demand. What we've seen through most of this year, despite higher costs for energy, despite the war in Ukraine, and despite foreign supply chain problems, is an economy that is still recovering from the job losses of the pandemic and that seems on pace for a period of sluggish growth. Here's a picture of job growth, our closest measure of how the economy is doing and of great importance to real estate markets because jobs create demand for housing. On this chart, we see the increase in the number of jobs in the economy compared to the same month of the previous year. In June, this was 2.4%, which would normally be considered very strong growth but we also see a steady decline in the rate of growth, which suggests that much of the recent growth isn't due to real economic growth, but rather it's just a recovery of jobs that were lost during the recession. To a large extent, the economy is just getting back to where it was. This is good for the people who are recovering these jobs, but we'd like to know what rate of growth the economy will settle into for the future once all these jobs are recovered. What is the sustainable growth we can look forward to over the next few years? We can get some clue by examining the job dynamics in the various sectors of the economy. Here's a look at manufacturing jobs, where the rate of growth slowed to 1.2% in June. This is still better than before the recession, but not much. The retrieval of jobs from overseas will take longer to have an effect. In construction, on the other hand, the growth of jobs looks pretty steady despite high interest rates and the end of the home price boom. Job growth in finance has slowed in response to higher interest rates. And staffing in retail stores remains flat as it was even before the pandemic. Most concerning is the slower increase of jobs in business services to 2.1% in June. This is the same level of growth in the years before the pandemic when the economy was growing at a very modest pace and it's down from the 3% rate that it had during periods of strong growth. If this sector doesn't grow at a faster pace, we'll probably see very modest growth for the economy as a whole. One of the reasons for slower growth in business services is the dramatic slowing in computer systems design services. Another is the shedding of temporary workers. It's likely that businesses are bracing for an economic slowdown, which often is a self-fulfilling prophecy. One sector where job growth has been strong is healthcare, 3.7% in June. But this is one of the sectors where many of the jobs are recovered jobs, not new ones. In nursing homes, for example, jobs in healthcare increased at a 2% rate for years before the pandemic. So it's difficult to imagine that a 3.7% pace can be sustained. The same is true for restaurants, where growth before the pandemic was 2% a year. and also with jobs in government, which increased 2.8% in June, but, before the, but for the entire decade before the pandemic, never increased even 1% a year. The recent surge in government jobs is largely due to recovery of jobs in state government, which includes state colleges and universities. Once these jobs are filled, we can expect very low growth in the government sector. 
So where does this leave real estate markets? The home price boom has put home buying out of reach for most Americans. Prices will continue to come down, even in Florida, but the readjustment of prices to match local incomes can take years. In the meantime, with the sluggish economy in the next few years, there will be greater demand for rentals and a flowing of people into markets where rents and home prices are low. For years, businesses and people moved to Texas because housing was cheap, then to Utah and Idaho. Now it's time to look for the new destinations. That's it. In this time of uncertainty, it's important for real estate professionals to stay on top of the local economic and home price situation. Local Market Monitor provides the data and analysis they need with local market reports and investors' metro analysis. Thanks very much for following along. This is our National Economic Outlook. I'm Inga Windsor.